Hi guys, today we've got the pleasure of taking a look at a new Gigabyte motherboard. This is the Z77X UP5TH and this is going to be the successor to the UD5H. Uh, UP series is actually dealing with X79 and also Z77. The big question is, how does this board compare to the UD5H? Well, it's actually very similar. The features are, are quite similar, simply for the reason that it uses the Z77 chipset. So the USB 3 the SATA and the general configuration is actually quite similar uh, but where it does differ is obviously it's got a new design as you can see very very sleek uh, the UD5 was uh, very vibrant in you know the blue aesthetics but this is a lot more neutral it's going to go with uh, your hardware a lot easier if uh, you like to pair up your hardware the big thing though with this board Ultra Dual 5 uh, we've seen that debut in Computex in, uh, back in June and this is the fifth generation of ultra durable and uh, you know it, it deals with a lot of uh, different features I'm not going to go through them all in the video because I'll, uh, I'll send you to sleep but um, if you want to check out that in, in quite a lot of depth check the link below and uh, it's got a section there in that review just to mention a few things though we've got on the PCB we have two layers of copper and then in between we've got a humidity layer so that just gives you uh, better protection if you're in a humid environment so you've got protection against that the MOSFETs around here uh, around the CPU socket give out less heat so that's going to aid you with overclocking um, so the general gist of it is higher grade components and then the uh, the third feature which is going to be significant about the UP series is Thunderbolt support now many of you will have heard about this, uh, this has got dual Thunderbolt ports and the idea of, with it is going to support up to 12 devices and then an additional 3 screens and that's simultaneous. So we've got the data transfer there, the capabilities of uh, 1 terabyte in under 5 minutes so that's uh, <laughs> very very fast. Um, it's, it's actually double the speed of USB 3 if you compare them to. Uh, so this is bi-directional and it's 10 gig uh, and it, you know the capabilities there are very very strong um, at the moment it's not mainstream but uh, of course as with USB 3 you know comparing that when that first debuted we didn't have any uh, devices we only had a few on the market and as, as things grow you know you get those uh, the devices to support that so this is a, a very much a future proof motherboard uh, for that technology that's coming through and, and with that of course uh, higher price tag so for this particular board we're looking at £250 uh, that's an additional £100 on the UD5 um, of course you do get durable, ultra durable 5 uh, those, those features and the qualities of that you get the fresh design and also you got the Thunderbolt support if that's your thing if, if you want to future proof your motherboard if you're looking to uh, jump on that bandwagon so with that little overview of the board complete now, we're going to take a look at what you get inside the box, do an unbox for you, and then we're going to check out all the features on this board and show you what it's all about. Okay, on to the unboxing then. Here we've got the packaging for UP5TH. As you can see, very similar to what we've seen with other Gigabyte motherboards. We've got the white box, absolutely jam-packed with info, uh, both on the front and the back. Um, nice little feature there we've got included is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card so we've got the uh, PCI Express and we've also got the antennas we'll check that out when we go into the box Ultra Durable 5 is obviously a, a big push for Gigabyte with this because this is the first time that they've uh, integrated it onto the back again even more features uh, we've got uh, all that uh, Ultra Durable stuff we've got the Thunderbolt stuff you know loads of info there all of this we can find on the product page for this particular motherboard so we don't go into those we're going to go into the box because this is what we want to check out okay so into here we've got uh, two boxes inside here we've got the motherboard box which motherboards inside an anti-static bag so we'll take that out and check it out later and then inside here we've got all the bundled accessories so as you can see there we've got a USB 3 uh, fascia that you can pop into your case and uh, that just plugs up to the uh, the USB 3 header 
And we've got three headers on the Gigabyte motherboard, so plenty to choose from there. We've got a flexible NVIDIA SLI bridge, so that's uh, for your dual card configuration. Then we've got uh, four cables here. We've got two SATA 2, that's 3G, and then we've got the SATA 3 6G, so plenty to choose from again. And here we've got the Wi Fi card. This is the Wi Fi and the Bluetooth. So that just plugs into your PCI Express. And we've also got corresponding antennas. We've got two of these. So these hook up to the uh, the back of um, the slots there. And that's got an activity LEDs for, for your Wi Fi and your Bluetooth. And then we've got the IO shield. Which is uh, you know common for motherboards, and then we've got a sticker there, gigabyte sticker, and loads of documentation. You can see here we've got uh, various booklets for uh, for the actual motherboard, um, for the Wi-Fi card, multilingual installation guide, and of course we've got the software CD. So this has got all of, all of your software. Um, your drivers, your utilities, and it's also got Norton on there, so in case you want to get started with that. So with that unbox over, we've taken a look at all the bundled accessories. We're going to check out the motherboard now. Okay, and here's the UP5. As you can see, a fresh new design for Gigabyte. We've got the gunmetal heat sinks with a blue strip. And we've got that single heat pipe that runs down to the Z77 chip, and a nice big heat sink there. Really do like what they've done with the aesthetics on this board, really does look good. Still got that matte black PCB, as you can see there, no reflection. And we've got black ports, lanes and slots. We've also got grey there for the memory. I don't know about you guys, but I really do like this design, it looks absolutely fantastic. And of course, because of the neutral colours, it's going to go really well, coordinate really well with devices of any colour. So uh, those that like to pair up stuff, it's going to look great. Okay, we're now going to take a closer look at all the features on this board. And we'll start with the CPU socket. As you can see here, this is LGA1155. So we've got the support for Intel's second and third generation of CPUs. That's Sandy Bridge and Ivy Bridge. I've actually got an Ivy Bridge chip already installed inside here because I've done the review, I've done the benchmarks and all those are on the uh, link in the description. Around the CPU socket we've got eight CPU phases and then we've got an additional two for the integrated GPU and then another two over towards the memory. We've got two heat sinks that cover the MOSFETs here and you can see there's a single heat pipe that runs through and this runs all the way down to the heat sink which covers the Z77 chip. Behind here we've also got 8 pin CPU power just to give you a bit more extra juice for those overclocks. And over on the memory side of things we've got dual channel DDR3 support. We've got from 1066 MHz up to 1600. Now I did get those details off the website and I do think there is a typo because obviously I benchmarked 2133 and that does work and, and of course Z77 you can get kits that are 1866, 2000, 2133. Uh, so I do think that is an error. We've got a maximum capacity of 32 gigabyte, and we've got Intel XMP support. Now in the corner we've got a power button. So there's the onboard buttons there you can press. Uh, we've got a reset button as well. And we've also got CMOS switch uh, in case you uh, need to reset CMOS. That CMOS button would probably be a good idea around the back because uh, obviously these buttons here are only going to be useful if you've got your board outside of a case on test bench. Along the bottom there we've got the voltage check-in points so those are for advanced users to get any voltages from a multimeter um, so yeah so advanced users there. 24 pin power socket and we've also got LED debug just above that so that displays a code which you can refer to in the manual so if you've got a troublesome boot up on post it will give you a digit there, you'll refer to the manual and that will help you to troubleshoot that. And then just to the side of that we've got a USB 3 header and that is one of three. Moving along we come to the storage ports, here we've got a combination of SATA 2 and SATA 3. 
the white ports, the two white ports there are SATA free, that's 6G. Now you typically would get on the Z77 motherboard, you would get another block and that would be provided by AS Media or Marvel, but we don't have it on this board. So we just got the, uh, the one stack and that's provided by Z77 which is underneath this heatsink here. And then we've got the SATA 2 port, so we've got uh, four of those in total. And that again is via the Z77 chip. Now there's an additional port next to these and uh, you're going to wonder what this is. And this is an auxiliary PCI Express power port. So this gives you extra juice if you're going to go for a dual card configuration. Now you might have seen this on other motherboards as a Molex connector and instead you know they've just done a SATA port here so you just need to connect that up to your power supply. At the bottom of UP5 we've got the additional USB 3 headers so in total we've got three headers and you can uh, hook that up to your perhaps your case has already got USB 3 on the front panel and then you've got the additional device provided by Gigabyte for the USB 3 you can hook that up and then you've got an additional slot to play with if you've got another device. You've also noticed here at the bottom that there's another SATA connection and that is SATA 3 but of course it's a different colour to the white ports on the other side so that signifies a different chipset so we're using Marvel for that so that's going to be slightly uh, degraded with the, uh, the, you know, the transfer rates. Next to that we've got the switch for the BIOS so we can switch between main and backup and as I've already mentioned there's a large heatsink which covers the Z77 chip and there's a heat pipe that runs from the very top all the way into this heatsink to provide adequate cooling. Onto the PCI Express, we've got various different options available here. To start with, we've got three PCI Express X1s. Now these are going to be ideal for the Wi-Fi card which Gigabyte provide with this bundle. And it's nice to see that at the very top we've got one of these slots. It just provides a bit more clearance for uh, the graphics card and the CPU cooler. Because so obviously if we had this X16 at the very top, then there would be a potential problem for a clearance and collision. Next up we've got three PCI Express X16s, one here, one here and then one at the very bottom. Now if you do use a dual card configuration, the middle one is going to be dropping it down to X8 and then uh, the bottom one X4. So if you use a single card, go for that top one, that will give you X16. And then in the, uh, you know, just above this bottom PCI Express, we've got a legacy PCI for uh, older devices. Gigabyte are once again making good use of space on the board. In the very centre, some of you may well have already seen as I've gone over it, there's a connector. Now this is a mini SATA connector and it allows you to install a mini SATA SSD and that's going to operate at 3 gigabits per second and that is controlled by Intel Z77. Okay, finally then, we're going to take a look at what the rear I.O. has to offer. And from left to right, we have VGA, DVI, and HDMI. That's going to work with your integrated GPU. You've got two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, and an eSATA at the bottom. That's 3 gigabits per second. And then we've got gigabit LAN. That's RJ45. And then we've got two USB 3 ports. And then we've got the significant ports there that uh, make this board special, the dual Thunderbolt ports, and then we've got six channel audio in this hub here and with optical SPDIF. So we've reached the end of our video and visually the board is absolutely stunning, you know if we were judging this just on the visual appearance, UP5 would win hands down, but in terms of performance you're looking at very similar sort of numbers compared to the UD5 and other rivals, and if you want to see how the UP5 compares uh, just jump over to the link in the description and we've got all the benchmarks there and you'll see that you know, it is a top performer. It's also overclocking really well with Ivy Bridge. I dropped in a 3570K and that overclocked up to 4.7 GHz without any hassle. So you know, it is certainly very capable. Looking at the feature set, this board really does excel. It's got the mini SATA connection for additional functionality. It's got the additional USB 3 headers. Of course, new ultra durable 5 components. It's got the Wi Fi and Bluetooth card, which is already provided out of the box. And of course, it has those dual Thunderbolt ports, which are going to make the board future proof, especially for Z77. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. If you want any additional information, if you want a bit more detail, then jump over to that review link in the description.
And if you can't get enough of Gigabyte products, coming up next we'll be casting a critical eye over their new GTX 680 Super Overclock. And there's been a lot of talk about this card, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it.